It's Atlanta nil, Liverpool one. Liverpool crash out of the Europa League. So much optimism, so much hope earlier on the season. I can remember in the summer when Liverpool were in the Europa League. I think the Twitter page for Europa League was just kept on literally spamming Liverpool. We were the biggest team in the uh, in the tournament, and the biggest team tonight crashes out of the tournament and limps out. I say crash out. Liverpool were limping for the large part of the second half. And what a disappointing end to Liverpool's campaign or Liverpool's journey. The irony is, <laughs> we kept the clean sheet tonight. The irony, but we still couldn't score those goals. It, was all, it wasn't about clean sheets tonight. We could have, we did afford, we had the sort of, I don't know, hope that we'd score four or five tonight, but it didn't happen. And there's so much to discuss about the second half today. And uh yeah, if you're joining us, like smash a like, even though Liverpool were rubbish tonight. Well, smash a like for us, but some sad, grumpy faces in tonight uh, with me. Sad joins me. Jean, uh, sorry, uh, Salib joins me as well. Where shall I start? Do you, st do you want to go straight to the second half, Salib? Because do what you want tonight. Because if you want to vent, then tonight is your opportunity, mate. Look, I'm not going to make this a show about criticizing things that I've already spoken about but I have been saying for a long time that this team hasn't got the balls they haven't got the character they haven't got the fight and we speak about other teams business end of the season what what the fuck is that what on earth is that what have we done in the last three weeks we have thrown this season away in 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 the last month Asim we have thrown this season away but start of Ramadan which is a month ago we were in the FA Cup we should have won that game mm. we we lost 3-0 to Atalanta. We've probably thrown the title away as well. And now we're out of the Europa League. It's embarrassing. We've, we've, we've basically stopped us winning three trophies in a space of one month. All that hard work that we put in from August to now. For, what was it for? To, 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 to give Klopp a Carabao Cup farewell. These, these players should be embarrassed at themselves because Klopp has done absolute wonders all season and he's been given this shit to work with. As much as he is to blame for some of the results being put out. But look at this nonsense. There's no fight whatsoever. This literally for the last half an hour of the game, they're just passing around the back thinking we're winning the game. Like, what are you doing? They're passing back to Alisson. Go long. Why are you trying to play out from the back four? We're 3-0 down, bruv. Go play forward. You keep going backwards. We need to score that way. I don't know what they're doing, Asim. How many times do we sit here and say, oh, Liverpool, so much urgency, last minute winner. What the hell is that? The lack of game management is embarrassing. It's absolute embarrassment. Well, Sadi, what, what did you want the manager to do today? You say it's a lack of game management. Tell me, what, if you were in Klopp's shoes, what would you have done differently? I'm, I'm not Jurgen Klopp, but what is that, Asim? What on earth is that? We started Provide a solution. Tell me. What was wrong with Liverpool tonight? The pop, we start okay. Let, let, let's get on to the first half because we started very, very well. We started very the first 15 minutes, very, very strong. We got the goal and we looked like we were getting in, in control of the game. The midfield, my issue was my issue has been for months is that number eight needs to be nowhere near this starting 11. This guy treats the football like a hot potato. Like, just do something with the ball. Every time you get the ball, you can misplace. So, how many misplaced passes, Asim, did Sobers like doing that first half? Or even in the first 15 minutes, how many? About two, three times, I think. And it nearly led to Atalanta goals. I don't know why that guy's in the 11. I, Harvey Elliott. Oh, my God. Harvey Elliott. What does this guy need to do to get into the team? What does he need to do, Asim? Like, what does Sabozlai do? What does he What does he do on the football pitch? Tell me. Apart from... Yeah, well done. Congratulations. You were good for the first three months of the season. Where have you been since December? Tell me where have you been? For the majority of the season, you've been absolutely nowhere. And everyone's going to tell me, oh, he's tired. He's played too much football. No, because I've seen him play for Hungary. And he's absolutely amazing. When he comes to Liverpool, he looks like Jordan Henderson. I don't know what's happened to this guy. And who's that down to, Asim? Who's that down? Who is that down to, then? Who is that down to? Gene... Shall we start with Harvey Elliott? Shall we start with Soboslai? Look, Soboslai wasn't good for the first 15, 20 minutes, but I thought he came into the game. But Harvey Elliott, to be honest with you, he was non-existent. And if anything, Harvey Elliott... Look, he, he, I'm, not, I'm not blaming Harvey Elliott, but Sarvis mentioned it. What does he need to do to get into the team team, uh, team gene? Harvey Elliott, is he the kind of player that you want to bring on against Atlanta? It's all about man-to-man -man marking, where you need to lose your marker. Is Harvey Elliott that type of player? Now, this is what I was going to get to. Asim. Look, I'm a, a, a big Harvey Elliott fan. I like him. But in today's game, I can understand why Sobosai started because of, because of the simple way Atlanta play the game. 
Look, we actually had a decent start to the first half. I thought we played really well. Our The way we were interchanging, going, uh, our front four or three were unbelievable. The amount of runs that we made, this was always going to be a difficult tie, the way they set up. But my issue is, Asim, is that second half was probably one of the worst performances I've seen from a Liverpool side. We were disgustingly bad. Mm, we were. You know, there was a lack of urgency. We just we didn't know what to do. And that was the biggest thing. When you've got the likes of McAllister in our midfield, if there's one thing about McAllister and we've lauded him all season, today I felt like we just held on to the ball so long. Granted, I understand they were, it was difficult for him to find a pass, but we just went sideways every single time. We were that shit. That for the last half an hour we were that we were that bad at him that we couldn't even find an opening of crossing the ball into the in, in into the opposition area. That's how shit we were today. There was a lack of urgency. There was a, in terms of tactically. Look, I think the truth is, you we can all give Salah a load of shit. I thought mm. he did really well first half. Salah did. Yes, he missed an absolute sitter, and that probably did that did probably um, change the tie. If he scores, that's a completely different game. But I thought mm. he did well in terms of his positioning. He was coming central. He was playing like a, a 10 in every... He was basically had the role, license to sort of go wherever he wanted. I think most of our, our, our um, forwards did. But that second half, I think, when you take off Salah and you take off Trent, where are you expecting any sort of creativity? And I'm sorry, but sometimes you have to point the finger at Klopp. There was not going to be any creativity then. When you've taken off your two of your most creative players especially in the final third, we were really, really going to struggle. But look, my issue today was I was not expecting us to go through today. I really, really wasn't because of the way we've been playing over the last month. For me, it was about playing today, having, um, getting a performance where, you know what, we can sort of take it forward in the next six games and we will, be, you know, hopefully we can see some sort of light. We didn't mm. see any of that. I don't see any sort of light in terms of what's going to happen in the next six, six games. We look at a disjointed side. We look at a side that doesn't know what it's going to do. And more importantly, I think, we look at a side that looks absolutely in shattered. We look at a side that doesn't... I mean, that was going to be my next question to you. You said, you know, we were devoid of ideas. Yes, Grant, 100%. But have we, have we run out of legs? And that is that like a big, think... massive concern going into the, you know, the final six games of the season. First half, we had 10 shots, Gene. Second half, we had two shots. First half, we had an XG of 1.23. Second half, we had a 0.04. What a stark contract. 0 4 for a side that is supposedly one, winning 1-0, one needs two goals, and is supposed to be attacking. That tells you, as an attack, there was actually no attacking threat. That was abysmal, I'm watching that. And I'm, for the Liverpool fans that went, actually went out to Atlanta to watch that game, how must they be feeling after that second half? Shit show. Because that's exactly what it was. And that's in better side that looked absolutely battered. That last 20, 25 minutes, that's another thing that's really, really worrying that we just, we're really, really suffering right now. Well, Peter, Peter asks, uh, thanks for your comment, Peter. Sarib, he asks a really good question. Why are we the only team suffering with fatigue? I thought, I thought Trent looked really sharp, especially for the first 45. He tired a little. And I, I think, look, I've been very critical in terms of our structure and our, in terms of our build-up. Every other week, I'm talking about it. You guys know if you follow me on Twitter. Um, but Sarib, I, I think they were, these were premeditated uh, substitutions tonight. If it was 2-0, I think Salah probably stays on. Trent comes off, maybe. But it was at 1-0. I think the manager had to make a call today. But if you take your creators off, Gino was mentioning that with this man-to-man -man marking at 3-0 down, it's it's really hard on the best of days. Never mind when you're 3-0 down away to Atlanta. But you have to understand the, the, the second half, Vanza, 100% right, for a Liverpool side that was playing for this manager, his last potential European fixture, we can't go out limping out like that. But if you take your creators off, if you take your ball players off, if you take your players with individuality, then you're going to struggle. And that's what exactly happened when he took Trent and Salah off. Yeah, I think you make a good point about the premeditated substitutions, Nassim. I think, I think Trent was always going to come off. I think this is his first <sighs> start since February. So it's been a long time since he started a game for Liverpool. So, And I, even so, I think if, if Conor Bradley was available, I think he would have probably started this game as well because I don't think Trent is up to you know proper match fitness to complete 90 minutes. And maybe that's a, that's a farce. But um, yeah, I guess... <sighs> It's, it's tough to say because I think we tried to kill the game in the first half. I think that's what we tried to do. And the mm -hmm. second half was just so lethargic. I think we were so like demoralized, maybe because of the most Salah miss. And like Gene says, if that goal goes in, it's a completely different game. 
But Trent Alexander Arnold in the first half was really, really good. And I know Asim, like you said, you put a tweet out saying how how progressive he is for his play and how how inf influential he is for Liverpool. And we saw that with that pass to Luis Diaz, and that's where the penalty came from. Um, but yeah, like it's it's just the same old story, Asim, isn't it? Same old story for Liverpool. We happened last season against Real Madrid. We went away to Bernabeu looking for a similar comeback, and we were yeah. very lethargic, and we lost one 0 And this the same story has happened again. Uh, but the, the fan base I was looking at before the game was an absolute disgrace. Oh, we're going to win 5-0, we're going to win 5-1, we're going to do this, we're going to make a rash come back. Like, have you not seen the way we've been playing the last two months? <laughs> Your eyes don't lie to you, Asim. And that's why I say, that's why I, I, I always came on B and I said, I don't analyse the results. Because at the end of the day, it might be a results business, but if you perform badly, it will catch up to you. And that's what's happened with Liverpool, because we've been riding our luck in this season for a very, very long time. Gene, um, let's rewind. Are you happy with the lineup? You're on mute, Gene. You're on, uh, you're on mute, Gene. Um, lineup, I didn't really have a, a, any major <laughs> issues with it, really. If, maybe if there was a one, I, Gakpo deserved a start, I felt, um, especially over the last couple of games where you know he's come on and, and, and made a difference. And, and with Diaz, Salah, fair play, I go midfield, you have to play uh, McAllister in the sixth. It was probably our strongest <laughs> lineup that we could have played. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I was actually quite happy with the way we played in the first 20 minutes. You can't not I, I thought we yeah. were in the way we played, we pressed, there was a lot of movement. And uh, you know, in the first 20, yes, there was a few times, but you no, know, look here, we're playing an Atalanta side. People need to understand this. There are gonna be instances, they're them but they're, they're a man to man team, they're gonna hush and hurry. This was their biggest game of in their history, and that's yeah. what we have to understand. This was their this was their Champions League final for you know, that's what it was. And they were gonna hustle us and hurry us and, and make a gale go of it. But I thought we did okay. Yes, there was times where Sobasla gave the ball away a few times. I thought Jones could have had a better better first half. But all in all, it was decent. I thought, okay, we got the early goal as well, which you couldn't ask for anymore. We got the early goal and exactly what we wanted. We felt like we were in control. And then all hell breaks loose in the second half, meaning we just stopped playing. And you know, you mentioned what the this fatigue it might have been over. I think we have played a, a lot of games without a lot of players. The players that like when Jota was out, Trent was out, Salah was out. The rest of the players played so many games, and the three of uh, Salah and Jota and these players coming back, they've just come back and they're not in form. Mm. So the players that have been playing all these games is finally caught up. That's why we're a team that looks are completely disjointed and a team that's absolutely knackered. But in terms of the lineup, I couldn't really complain with the lineup. Sarib, you got Kakpo on the team sheet. You must have been happy. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't playing as a winger. There was plenty of fluidity, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah to be fair, I, I thought. I, I thought. I thought. To be fair, I thought Gakpo in that first half was was really really good, and he should have had an assist as well. That little flick, and yeah. him and Diaz were combining really really well. And I'm seeing some of the comments saying Gakpo is this Arib. I'm sorry, Jota does not look. He looks miles off it. Yeah, he How can you expect Jota to start that intense, in, so oh. intense game? Look, I love you know Diogo, but I don't think he goes from nowhere near yeah. fit enough to start every time. Diogo, when, once he's got half a yard on someone with his sort of direct play, with his sort of low center of gravity, the way he you know ricochets seem to go with him. But if he's not fully fit, not even I won't even say he's eighty percent fit, honestly. And yeah. it was if he got 20 minutes, we should be happy he's got some minutes in his legs. And if he can get a, and have a role, especially in the last three to four games, then we should be happy. Gakpo looked a lot fresher, a lot fitter, a lot hungrier. And look, this wasn't on Jota. Yes, we were the game plan was to run them ragged and bring our you know Nunez on, Diogo on. Maybe he gets you know a chance in the box. But we had two shots in the second half in the penalty box, two shots. And they were probably like some repo uh, roly polies. They weren't even hitting, uh, you know, sort of vein. But anyway, um, in terms of the first twenty minutes, Sarib, I thought Liverpool played a perfect plan. Yes, they weren't. I think they showed us a bit, a bit more respect tonight. Maybe it was the the three nil goal line, a uh, score line. We have to give their manager uh, Gasparini a lot of credit in the second half, where he had told his team that you can't sit off. The likes of Salah, you can't sit off, especially give time on the ball to the likes of Trent because if you don't get tight, he'll just put it over you. And we saw his array of passing for the first 30 to 45 minutes. Liverpool, there was plenty of chat in the WhatsApp where Liverpool were going too long, too soon. But when you've got a man to man marking system, when you try to isolate their three at the back line with our three at the, in the front line, there is a tendency to go a bit too soon, and especially when you've got a really direct player. 
nobody, I, all, I think uh, Gary Neville called him um, probably the sort of David Beckham or Kevin De Bruyne. When you've got Trent in your team, he is going to make some loose passes, but that's the risk and reward. He will make five, six key passes a game. He might lose it to five, six at times as well, but that's this. That's the way it is. That's the way Liverpool play through him. But I thought if there's any positives, I think Trent's sort of 60, 65 minutes were really, really good and you can only only hold him in good stead going forward. I know it's difficult to put some positive uh, on and shed some positives on tonight, but look, we're all hurting. I think it was the way we we didn't. Lo I don't think we lost this tie today. We lost it last week. Of course, we hundred percent lost it last week. You cannot afford to lose Atlanta at home at Anfield three 0 It just doesn't happen. Yes, they're sixth or seventh in the Serie A, but at the end of the day, they're a the decent side, especially the way they play. But it's the risk that we've took now, Sadib. We've played the likes of Maka. We've played the likes of, you know, Salah. And the manager, just like Gene said, that these players have had some extra minutes in their legs. But now we're going to away to Fulham. It's a tricky banana skin type of tie where we have to, we have to dust ourselves off and pick ourselves up again because these six games are going to be very, very intense. And Fulham, especially with the Marco Silva side, they don't play this type of football with um, uh, compared to Atlanta, but they're a difficult side and they've proved it in the past against us. <sighs> yeah, you're right, Asim. Look, the only positive from today, because I know you like your positivity. Oh, no, no. Honestly, I don't. Oh, you do, you do, you do, you do. You do. <laughs> the only positive about Not today. Tonight. The only positive of today is that we... The reaction to obviously the reaction was not great, but we got a, we won the game. We won the game. We were on, we were on the trot of two losses. We did we did win the game. Another positive is that we kept the clean sheet. Fair enough. Congratulations. When it doesn't mean nothing, you're doing the best. Well done to Liverpool FC. And you talk about Fulham on the weekend. I'm not even worried about Fulham. I'm not even looking at the league. This this team drains you. You know, I thought last season was bad, mm. but when you're when you're on the high of highs and you get the low of lows, it hurts a lot more than when you expect it to happen to you, you know? Like last yeah. season when we, when, when we played Wolves and got absolutely battered and we played Brentford, I, I wasn't even that disappointed. I was, but I was kind of expecting it. But this season, in the last week, the last month or so, I didn't expect Liverpool to go to Old Trafford and not win either game. I didn't expect us to lose to Palace at home. I didn't expect us to go out of the Europa League. So it just hurts that little bit more, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, like you said, Fulham is a big game for Liverpool. And... Is my head even there? It has to be there. We're, we're still in a tight race, but I'm just so completely zoned out of the season. I this last month has taken. I'll, a I'll zone you out even further. Klopp Don't was after the game. I liked the game a lot, um, a lot for a long time. The commitment, the desire, the power. That, was, that was, he, was he supposed to say? Yeah, we'll him. You know, uh, with all due respect, yeah. is he is he supposed to hang the heart to dry with six finals? To come. We're not stupid fans, Asim. We watched the game, we know what we saw. We we said, to power. What power did you see from Liverpool today? What tell me to don't take the piss out of us? Yes, say yeah, we played, tried to make things happen. Okay, fine. I understand that he has to be positive, but don't take the piss out of us. Or oh, the desire was there. My ass desire was there. There was hard, I hardly saw anything. The power was there. What power did you see from Liverpool today? Because I didn't see any. I understand be positive. I get it. He's the manager, he's not exactly gonna come out and and, and say we were shit. I get it, but don't take the piss. We're, we're not, not good in the first half. Positive. We're not done. Not even the first half. Not even the first, the first, 20, the first, minutes. Half. first 20 minutes. That's it. 20 of 93 minutes. And we, apparently Here's that's a question. Minutes. Here's a question for you. Um, because apparently we get accused of not talking about this player um, more. And it's a brilliant question from the one and only Unks. Before I do, there's a, um, a shout out for my nephew. I won't normally give him a shout out because he's an Arsenal fan and he's been... Uh, in a shit mood of the last 24 hours by Arsenal, the European ch champions going out uh, last night against Bayern Munich. Well, it's his birthday today and a uh, big up to uh, my annoying nephew, Hassan, in the chat. Um, it's uh, asked a brilliant question, Jean. Is Salah showing his age? It looks like it, doesn't it, Asim? I think since the injury, he's just not been the same same player. And I, I can understand that it takes, takes a little while. I know he was out for a, for a long time. Um, you know, I thought through it nearly three months if you if it's if yeah, January to the I said the start of of, uh, of April, mm. it's a long time to be out and for him to come back and start hitting the ground running for so long. He's a guy that never gets injured. I'm 
Look, Salah, I'm, I'm his biggest fan, and everybody knows I'm not. I don't really like sitting here talking about him because for me, he's the for me, he's the best player that I've ever seen play for Liverpool Football Club. Um, but there are signs that he there is a, some sort of decline. I'm, I'm I don't see him running past football uh, defenders anymore. The issue that I have with him is it maybe it would have been slightly easier for Salah if there, were, if there wasn't so much reliance on him to start playing and, and doing stuff. But when you miss chances the way he made, the one that he missed today and the ones that he's missing, it's unforgivable. I've been, I've gone to town on Darwin Nunes over the last month saying when the chances fall, Salah has to, uh, Darwin has to take him. Yes, Salah maybe have credit on credit in the bank, but the truth is that credit doesn't mean shit to me if you're not going to, because when we're going for a title, when they're going for trophies, wherever we, we were, you mm. have to be able to put them away when they fall to you. And today was an absolute joke of a of of of, of a of a of a sitter. Because come on, man, how can that come off your shin? You just lift it over the keeper. It's simple. It's so many sh shite footballers put that away, man. And I, Salah, I, I, I thought you know. might carry it for another further yard. I did. I actually thought he was gonna as well. But I understand what he did because there was a lot. He had time. He had he he had the composure to actually pull it off. We well, bloody came off his shin, man. And look, I'm um, just, in terms of Salah, him. Look, is it time to cash in? We'll find out the the um, what's going to happen in the summer. The issue mm -hmm. right now is we've got so many players that we probably need replacing right now. There's question marks over Diaz for 75 million. How many are you going to get actually get rid of? Uh, Darwin Nunes isn't exactly setting the world, this world alight. And there's Mo Salah as a guy that's not informed. Gakpo hasn't done much. Jota is injury prone. There's a question mark on every single one of our forwards right now. What are we going to do? Get rid of every single one? Well, the, there's one million coming in. Edwards is cashing in. The coincidence, the coincidence of this topic is there's a uh, quotation that's just come out. Uh, Klopp on Salah, super penalty, next chance unlucky. Not the first time he's missed a chance like that. I don't make a big story of it like you do, Salib. Is he talking to you? I mean, I'm not the one that just screamed about it, did I? <laughs> but no, no, no. Look at <laughs> he does. He does know. Joking aside, joking aside, has he got credit in the bank? Is he showing his age? Has his legs gone? Or is it a bit of everything where this this injury, this hamstring injury, has set him back a bit? What does what does credit in the bank even mean, though? Asin? What does what does that even mean? Like, how is credit? Yeah, because is of his greatness, you you can give him the benefit of the doubt a bit more because you oh, know. Okay, can he can he can, can he gonna come through? Kenny Dalglish was great for us. Are we going to put him up front and then criticize him for missing a chance? No, we're not going to do that. It's, just, it's silly. For fuck's sake, he's eighty eight or no, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Sa Sadio Mane. If you brought Sadio Mane back and he started missing cities, they're going to say, oh, it's okay because he 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 was scoring goals for us five years ago. Well, I don't give a shit what you've done five years ago. If you're missing chances now, you're not, you're not at the level of him. I'm not saying Mo Salah's not yes, at the level. go through a bit of a bad, bad patch of form. It's like Virgil van Dijk. One second, Virgil van Dijk was shit with last season. What are you going to do? Get rid of him. No, but no, but... Because of, you know, a, 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 a player's been through a, a, a patch of bad form, say you want him out. Yes, if it was a sustained period of, let's say, 18 months and he's been shit, I would say, yes, ship him off. Salah's mm. been shit for three months. Yep, I, I, even, even and he's only been shit for three, four months. But no, I believe he's over the hill and I think we could do with 100 million. So that's why know, I'm saying tell him. You're not understanding the context. He, this has happened after an injury. And what it looks like to me <laughs> is that he wasn't like this before his injury. You can tell this injury that he's had has taken a toll on him. Now, I'm not saying he's not going to come back and forth. Inshallah, I think he's going to go in the summer anyway. But if he, if he, if he decides to stay over the summer... Uh, we we for sure know that Mo Salah will be back, but from what it looks like, what's happened to him three months ago, four months ago, before he went to Afghan, that injury that he got on international duty, it looks like he's still carrying that burden on him, and it, and he and he's missing chances. He doesn't look as sharp anymore. He's not getting to the right areas. He just looks completely off. He's lethargic. His body language is wrong. It's it, it just not the Mo Salah that we've seen over the last few years, even the last few months. And to, to say that it, he'll be back in form, yeah, he might be absolutely fine. And I, we will give him the time to do so because, like you said, he does have credit in the bank. But having credit in the bank is not going to win us that game today. Having credit in the bank is not going to win us the Premier League title. Performing on the pitch week in, week out, scoring goals when you need to score goals are going to win us the league and win us the Champions Leagues and the Europa Leagues and all those trophies that we are going to win in the future. Players need to step up, Asim. It's not even Mo Salah. You can go for the whole team. Jota, Gakpo, Nunez especially, Diaz... Sobis, like all these players, they need to step up because this is business end of the season. And me and Chin were having a laugh about it yesterday. Arsenal's business end of the season, but look at us at the end business end of the season. We, mm -hmm. We've been knocked out the FA Cup. We've probably thrown the league away, like I said before. And that maybe that's that, that's another story to come. But tonight we there was nothing, Asim, and we need we to do. We better. haven't scored a goal in open play for six hours of football. I think it's since Sheffield United. Someone said in the comments. I was Diaz at Old Trafford. I think that was the last open play goal. Diaz at Old Trafford. 
it's has followed up with another comment he says credit in the bank buys him time and buys him time there's another comment gene where okay if you want to get rid of salah and i'm probably in that camp where I think it's the it's the right time where we need we we we're, we're a self sustaining club. We are if we're gonna get hundred million in the summer, it might be the right time where but we have to make sure we replace him uh, in the right way. If we have to put I don't know hundred to hundred fifty million towards someone or towards two players, then if we're gonna have to do that in the summer, then we have to greatness isn't replaced. Muhammad Salah is irreplaceable. So we have to find different ways of playing, maybe different a dynamic. Uh, we have to go through uh, different people in our team. We will sort it out and the manager, new manager coming in will have new ideas, but I think it might be the right time. I don't want a summer overhaul of Van Dijk, Salah, Trent, leaving with the likes of Diaz and Jurgen Klopp. It's too much of a gaping hole, leaving too much of a vacuum in the squad. And for the new manager, the, the the job is absolutely massive. It's 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 a big enough job replacing not a, a, just a manager. It's a, he's an icon uh, uh, in the city and in world football as well. Never mind replacing these great players, these absolute monsters uh, in the squad. So we have to make it easy. You have to give it a bit of time. If it happens over two three windows, then so be it. We have still got a really really good squad. Whoever the manager is, if it's Amarim, he's inheriting a really good squad. Let's make no mistake about it. And I think I'm I'm hurting. I'm hurting today, but I was hurting more last week in a strange way, Gene, because I lost, I, like I said, we lost the game last week. And yes, I, I know what you're saying. You've got to, I'm frustrated as well tonight with the, the manager's comments if I'm uh, sort of moving away from playing to devil's advocate. But we, we have to look to Sunday now, Gene. We have to pick ourselves up. And our captain, Virgil van Dijk, has said, we need the fans behind us because these six games are massive and anything can happen. Fans are going to say City are not going to drop points, but we have to make sure we do our business on our end and then look to City because they, I think they don't play a Premier League game for 20 days. Correct me if I'm wrong, someone in the chat. And we have to work. We have to work on scoreboard pressure now, Gene. Yeah, and look, we have to... We just have to put the points on the board. This is why today, in terms of performance, was important to me. I knew we weren't going to win, but I just <laughs> thought if we could have some sort of momentum, win the game with a decent performance, it at least gives us something to go by when it when it when it concerns the next game. Win the next two, which to us is not good. We've got two difficult games: the Derby and and uh, Fulham away, which are two difficult games for us. Somehow, if we manage to win them two games, anything can happen. Look in the league. We know we we know that we've seen it uh, in the past. And you know we will be far ahead of them before they play their next game, um, and that's, you know, so look, I'm not going to sit here and say that the title's done. It's not. As I, do I see us winning it? Probably not. But it'd be stupid of anyone to say it's, it's a done. The, the the title's done because it isn't. It's all it takes is one city loss, Liverpool to win a couple of games, and we're and we're top of the table and and, and ready to go again. So, but especially with the players that we've got coming back, the issue is we're playing shite football right now. Mm. And Gene, just to come into, into this, I, I was yeah. getting um, called out on the WhatsApp, on the BNR group saying, Asim said, we can out football teams. But my point, and I didn't reply to Jake's message because I knew it was coming onto the show. But if any team who takes out Salah, Salah was, you know, picking up positions, as you said, Gene, earlier on in the, all throughout the game, dragging them out of position trying to sort of drag this man-to-man -man system out and creating the space in behind for the likes of uh, Gakpo and Diaz and um, who, was, who was else from Diaz and uh, Salah. Um, uh, so I was like going in uh, in behind him. But if any team takes Trent out of their team, any team takes Salah, and I know how bad our build-up is, but it got worse. It got worse. Then Robertson came off. Gakpo went on left-back, even though he was really late in the game. But you have to make sure you have the players. And we were all right. We were all right. I thought we were decent in the first half. But I think we just ran our legs. We ran our steam. We ran we're our knackered. ideas. We were knackered. We were absolutely we're knackered. knackered. And it didn't help. And someone said we were playing rugby. And yeah, we were playing rugby. Because we didn't have any, any sort of guy to just hold the ball, string a few passes together. And, you know, if we were too behind, we were just lack of, lack of patience as well. But I don't know, man. It's it's very difficult now, Gene. It's very very difficult how we're going to pick ourselves up. The manager said we have to pick ourselves up. Um, it was a good result. It was the main thing we won. 
I think these. I think deep down he doesn't even believe that himself. Especially looking after, if he watches that second half back, he wouldn't believe it. But yeah, I agree with Sharon. The subs made us worse, hundred percent. But there was a few instances, a few players I want to talk about. Gene is Curtis Jones, uh, McAllister. What did you make of their performance? Look, I, if I'm honest with you, I thought Curtis Jones was shit, uh, especially in the first half, mate. I, I really thought he was shit. And I'm I I couldn't believe that he played. Did he not play the ninety? I think he played. Yeah, the, and, was, yeah. yeah, I think he played. And I was shocked at how bad he was. He looked. There were so many. T- I think this was a game that you know exactly what's going to happen. If this mantle man, they're going to come and hit you hard. Curtis Jones dwells on the board till today. He was he's played really well in the past, but today he just I, honestly he was shockingly bad, shockingly bad. You know, I guess I've improved it slightly when the first half, the amount of times he received the ball and lost the ball, I was getting really, really pissed off with him. And who was the player you mentioned? Maka. Uh, Maka. Maka, look, I see him. he struggled in the game because we did in the first half, I thought he did decent. Maka, uh, he, he was okay. But second half, if there's a player that you think, you know what, get onto the ball and, and make play, the amount of times he deceived the ball and just went sideways, he, maybe he was absolutely shattered and, and, and didn't know what to do because he was absolutely bad because he's played practically every single game as well. But again, it was probably one of his worst performances in terms of I expected a lot more from him on the ball. And he was just going sideways, man. Yes, the passing lanes, they probably blocked off and all that type of stuff. And there probably wasn't enough in terms of going forward, in terms of movement. But the thing that got to me more than anything is they were pressing us in the second half when they were coming. Yeah, and, you, and when you bring on Darwin Nunes, the players, the, the pressing our defenders, we didn't once go over the top where Darwin Nunes can make that run. Like we did against Villa at the start of the season, there was instances when you're playing a high line, when you're playing man-to-man, there was an amount of times Trent was able to play that ball over the top and then our players were running onto them. We didn't see any of that. We didn't see any running in behind from any of our players. Which I find baffling. They play man to man. They play sort of high line. They're man to man. We've got players that are quick enough and good enough to get in behind. Not once did I see any of that. I, I think you have to give credit. Yeah, we lost our legs. Atlanta we lost our players players as well, but their press was, they got a lot higher. They got a lot higher in, and they made us play straight balls, straight balls, and especially when you have, don't have Trent. Uh, if he plays a straight ball, he still probably gets through because of the quality of Trent. But uh, I don't know, Sarib. I don't know. I. I you know, the irony is, I think Curtis Jones could have been better. I think he lacked a bit of lack, uh, sharpness, maybe on the ball, more so off the ball. But if you actually watch that game again, Curtis Jones probably won the ball back 80% of the time. And Him and Maka, that's what I was going to say. 80% of the time, it was his counter press. Every time Jurgen Klopp applauded someone, it was Curtis Jones. Yeah, so I, I get I get that he, he did, probably didn't have a good game on the ball. He lacked a bit of drive. Where sometimes when he drives, he can't he can't catch him up because he's deceptively quick. But that that that's the problem. We we are expecting these players now, Gene, at the business end of the season, Sarib, to come in and set the world alight. It's just not going to happen. I've already touched on uh, Jota. He looks miles off it. That's why I've said, I've said as much as we want to believe that we're this amazing, you know, trophy hunting, quadruple chasing Liverpool Football Club of four years ago. We're not the same team anymore. I seem like the whole dynamic, the system, the players, the structure, everything's completely different. This is not the same team that won the Premier League in 2020. This is not the same team that won the Champions League in 2019. Yeah, this I didn't is- that, it? Come on, man. Yeah, but uh, let me give you, let me give you context, Gene, because. <sighs> Like I, I've been trying to explain, to, well, I've been, I, my opinion has always been throughout the whole season is that we're just a little bit short. I'm telling you, there's going to be a time where we're riding our luck. Yeah, we're getting the results that we're getting. We're top of the league, five points clear going into the new year. But there's going to be a time where it's going to fall apart. And this team's still in some sort of progression. It's still in some sort of, you know, dissection. It's been dissected. The midfield was dissected in the summer. been completely changed. The cogs have been put into a new midfield. It, there's always going to be a t- There's always going to be a time where it's not going to be easy, you know. Some of these players have never been in the position of a title risk before, like some McAllister, so it's like Gravenberch, not even Gravenberch um, at Bayern Munich was a substitute bench. Ajax, the, the Dutch league is not of that the caliber. Yeah. Most of these players have not played at the pinnacle, especially our midfield, which is such a vital part of the mid, a vital part of the team. Chino is always going to happen. And business end of the season, you can really see that some of these players are just not up to the standard at the moment. And that will come with time, similar to what happened in 17-18, where we were just that bit short in that Champions League final that we kicked on the next season. And the story was absolutely amazing. And in the summer, there's going to be a real opportunity to do so with a new coaching staff, with a new manager, with a lot of new players <laughs> as well. 
I just think this season has been a great journey for us and it could be an even better journey, but it's, it, there's always going to be a sour taste that they could have been a lot more if we just put on a bit more of a show. And it, it kind of has tainted my kind of final years for Klopp because we should, last season as well and the, the Champions League final, the, the, the losing the league title the year before that, then this season, if we just leave with the Carabao Cup, the last three years has not been exactly the highest of highs and... I just hope we can win the league for him, you know. As much as I don't think we will, there's still a great opportunity for us to do so, Gene. And as much as you said to me that the league's not over, and I don't think it's over too, and I'm obviously not going to change my prediction, but there is still time to fix this. Six more games to go, four away games, two home games. We can end the season on a high. And as, like Asim said, we can do a mad one, and that mad one was a mad four, mad three. We can end on a mad two instead, because we're going to leave it a cup in the Premier League. Uh, there's a good question from... Um... Uh, Ash, oh, sorry, I missed your super chat. Ash, thank you very much uh, for your super chat. Big up, mate. Um, style of play takes its toll. Chasing 22 deficits takes it uh, takes its toll. Missed chances have now caught up with us and the whole attack lacking confidence too. I think that's a great point, Gene. You you can't keep chasing games and it's going to bite you in the ass, and it has. And that's exactly what it was and it doesn't and he's 100% right. It's even more so when your attacking players are... <clears throat> Devoid of any ideas, devoid of any confidence, and then missing missing chances galore. It's just gonna, you know. And 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 Salib's right. It's taken us. This is why over the last few months, yes, we've rode our luck. We've we, in in terms of performances haven't probably been great, but we got the wins. Thinking that you know what, a great any any uh, any great title winning side will always have performances where we've always said you play shit and win. That's a that's a side that's that's good enough to go and win the title. I understand in terms of what Salib's saying in terms of transition. What we do at the start of the season, did we think we were going to challenge for the title? Probably not. What we we found ourselves in in December that you know what this team's actually good enough, and it looks like it's good enough to go and challenge for the title. Then obviously the injuries mounted, and I'm not going to make excuses in terms of injuries again because we actually I I feel as though we got through that sort of period. Yes, we rolled our luck uh, in terms of performances, but we got through it. For the last month, Asim, for me, it's on the forwards. Yes, people can say to me, yeah, the um, the defence hasn't been great. Some players are coming back from injury and all that type of stuff. You simply don't win titles and trophies by missing the amount of chances. They're missing the amount of sitters that we've missed. We've missed some absolute shockers over the last month. And you deserve that. You FA Cup, we went out to Manchester United Um we, again, that we, we again we missed so much, had so many chances. Should have won the 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 league games against Palace United games that we should have pummeled them. Yeah, mm -hmm. the amount of chances that we missed. Bottom line is, you if you if your if your forward players ain't ain't on form, yeah. and you're, you're gonna get punished. And I've been calling you all season, business end of the season. If you get that chance, you have to be good enough to put it away. And we simply haven't been good enough. Our forwards are not good enough. Our <sighs> forward, I, 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 yeah. on, on the forwards, I want to ask you because. I'm, I'm a culprit of this myself. Start of the season, even during November, December, even up till February, we were talking about, you know, the big five that we got up front, like as a collective, yeah. you know, excluding Ben Doak because he was in and around the conversation as well. So Jota, Gakpo, Salah, Diaz, um, as, as a collective, are the best probably array of forwards in Europe. You yeah. still stand by that? Look, it's very hard. I think it's very harsh to judge this front five right now. Right now. Why? You know, because his form is form is temporary, class is permanent. I think how many goals have we scored? Uh, are we still top of the league in I terms of goals scored? I think Leverkusen because it might be overtaken us, but the last time I checked, we were the top scorers in Europe as well. But yeah, I, I think it's very harsh. Yes, I think I do think we need some change in it, especially over the season, what the season has bought. I think since Diaz has moved into a wide winger with Gomez inside, I was really, and you guys know. I've been really critical and concerned about our lack of 1v1, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Ability to take on a player out wide. Salah was that player. Mane was that player to drop a shoulder and go. Stand up your marker and go, whether it's left or right. And Diaz has shown it in bits where he's been carrying the ball of the last, you know, a month and a half or so. But at the moment, especially, you know, against these sort of sides. And, you know, Shahab asks a really good question. He says, Asim, I don't think I've ever seen anyone playing a man-to-man -man outclass was like this. So, what is the right up, the right setup to resolve uh, resolve that? You know, someone meaning mentioned the positional play where you have your uh, you know team in positional play uh, type of setup where it's all about making a numerical advantage. 
And Liverpool have played that and gone in and out of that setup as well. But when you come up to it, I think Liverpool showed a, a, a good way of how to deal with that system where we're using Alisson a lot today, more so than normal, where just to tr try to get that numerical advantage, to create that mini transition, if you like, from the keeper. And we've got a spare man going through, you know, the, the three lines. Or you can have, my point is about Mane and Salah over the years, is you can run in behind and make sure you, your midfielders go really deep, really close to the defenders and make the space for your, your up, uh, top three. I think Barcelona did that when uh, Guardiola was a, a manager at Bayern Munich and they had uh, Neymar, Suarez and Messi. It was a very, very high risk where you want to overturn, overturn the ball at the high, high up the pitch. But when you've got players like Neymar, Messi and you know uh, Suarez, it's a very high risk. But what do you do? You try to create the, all the mistakes up in the last third of your pit, uh, third of your pitch. And the other ob obvious is is playing in balls into the channels, into the channels, working those common combinations, quick one twos, driving to space. And I don't want to shout, give a shout to Man United player. Whenever Man, I think McTominay uh, plays well against Leeds. All the Man United fans say that McTominay plays well against Leeds. And this is what I'm quite disappointed in Saboslai. Saboslai has got that drive to run into the box, get behind you know, his marker, run from left to right, driving into the space, uh, into midfield. And that is the way to be. Because if you don't have that 1v1 individuality all over the pitch, you're going to struggle to win your battles. Because these guys are big, strong, and you know, fairly dynamic. So if you're gonna, not going to numerically do a positional way type of setup against this team, then you have to put a shift in. And if you don't have the quality in wide areas where Liverpool, I thought, lacked width, Liverpool lacked width and Liverpool lacked a, a player who can just, you know, sort of comfortably, uh, you know, go past his marker. And this is, I think, Liverpool, an area that they need to go into the summer. We have to buy a player who can take players on. If you don't have that, you have to create the perfect goal. And Liverpool are now, you know, panicking in front of goal. That's what it is. Every time we get close, whether we build up attack and it doesn't happen enough, or if it's in transition, we do everything right. But the moment, the last pass, the way to pass or the last shot is just not good enough. And are you surprised we haven't scored a goal in the last, what was it? Six, uh, how many hours? Six hours, Gene. Six hours. Well, yeah, but look, Rumi says, um, but Asim, we still missed some glaring opportunities. A aside with, in sort of, blessed with so much talent, Rumi, is going to miss chances. We have to make sure we show the calmness, we have the composure in front of goal. Now, at the moment, I don't I don't know where that calmness is in front Basically, of goal. Asim, we can't take on a player and we can't score as well at the same time. Gene, let, me, let me ask you. Let me ask. Asim is saying, we can't take on a player because they're not good enough and in front of goal, the shit. Let me, let me ask you, Gene. Asim yeah. used the word panic panicked in front of goal we are panicking in front of the goal do you think that's down to the occasion or the players are simply not good enough or a bit of both you want me to start to start talking about darwin nunes and again don't you because <laughs> playing all of this so i'm just i'm just asking you a question you don't even need to speak about nunes you can speak about whoever you want because he, he's the he's the guy that misses most of our chances granted salah's missed quite a few over the last few few weeks <laughs> jay's but after me tonight jay's after me what do you want me to say jay what do you want like, me to say? I, I've been telling you, you you're too optimistic. You what do you want me to say? You give too much credit. You need to be a bit more humble. Like have me. I given Liverpool? Have now, I given Liverpool you, credit? You see in the comments. No have I given Liverpool credit tonight? No one's pointing fingers at Sarub anymore because everything I've said is coming true. And what, you what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? I, people, would actually, Sarib, people would actually like you if you didn't support Arsenal. I know, I know, like, I know, I know. I know. I know. When you talk about Arsenal, the Liverpool fans are... I haven't even spoken about, spoke about Arsenal. Arsenal. Liverpool fans have just lost a game. This guy, Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. I don't blame him. I didn't him. say anything about Arsenal. He deserves it. I didn't say nothing about Arsenal. I didn't say nothing about Arsenal. You guys spoke about Arsenal because they got absolutely shafted the last two weeks. So all of a sudden, you've gone quiet. I will, I will pull out the group chat message and put it on Twitter. When the Kimmich said, when I sent a message to the group chat. I, I told you. I, I told you. I told you that flipping Arsenal when Champions League football comes, they're gonna bottle it. And what did I say? Did I not say that they're gonna bottle it? I said, cook they me, cook me. Sarib, this is how you deflect attention <laughs> away from yourself. What do you mean? <laughs> when Kimmich scored, I, I was the first one. I was like, Kimmich, we got last hey, no, I'm, He's I'm, I'm, I'm I, oh, Jay says, say how it is. Like, forgive yeah, me if I, if I break. How, what do you want me to say? 
I'm I agree with Liverpool was shit today. There's my man. It's us. Jay, go for him. You're you, know, for him. Yeah. you said oh, Liverpool are going to win the league in August. That's him. Oh, did I hell? No. As in, not like by points. Well, yeah, I thought I, we're going to live in the league. And we're only two points behind. We're not going to win well, I have no issue with, uh, the, with the shouts of Cole winning the league, man. At the end of the day, but still, it's not like we're out of winning the league. Are we? Are we? Does it look like we're going to win the league? Probably oh, not. not. Ask him, look, back to what we were talking about. In terms of Salim's question, in terms of composure, I said we in front of goal that we just simply missed too many, and I I called it at the early the season. Darwin Nunes is probably going to be the reason why we live, we win or lose this title because the chances were ninety were mostly going to fall to him. Salah, I was I didn't think Salah would miss this many because I didn't think he was going to get injured and, and miss as many as he has. You're on, you're on mute. Um, you're on mute. You're on mute. Even bloody um, uh, what's his name Diaz. Look at the amount of ton chances Diaz missed. He's missed some big chances. The Man City ones, you know, I've got, you simply don't miss them chances if you want to go and win a title. And you know, it's it's weird one, man, because sometimes we look as we looked at, at, the, at the start of the season, we look aside composed, we looked aside that was gonna, you know, every time we were going forward, we were gonna create. But mm. I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know exactly what it was, but I probably think it's probably fatigue. And a loss of form to most of our players that's really causing these boys to not become the players that they were because we just look aside that can't even create anymore. And today's game, and I mentioned it before, Sim, for half an hour, we couldn't even create an opening to get a crossing. Yeah. That tells you how bad we are right now as a football team. <sighs> Sarif, anything else you want to discuss? We've I just been think through, through the team, we've gone, you? we've touched on the manager as well. Can we do it? The league. <laughs> well, we have got nothing else to play for. Are you having a laugh? Are you having a laugh? You just you you've just watched that for the last month at the business end of the season, and you think we're going to win the league? You know what? Maybe we will. Let me be a bit more positive. May yeah, maybe we will win the league, and maybe they maybe we have to sacrifice all of this for us to gain a for, for the greater good and for us to be champions in front of our supporters. Are you in the bus? Are you in the bus? I'm I'm not on no bus. I'm on my chair and I'm sitting on my chair. I'm gonna stay on my chair. He's always, he never, he's always <laughs> this is an unpredictable season, I said, you know. He's, he always yeah. he thinks Arsenal's gonna win the league, innit? I said, so why are you asking him? I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna change my opinion six games to go, Gene. You know, yeah, you can't win the win the they were top. Let's there, ask right? the chat. Let's ask the ask the chat. Are we winning the league? Yes or no? There'd be many that say, yeah. I said probably no, not. No. Kashif says no. <sighs> Yes or no, guys? <laughs> hey, look, John Henry's new York thing's bro. We ain't even in three games, let alone six. <laughs> <laughs> well, the oh. most ironic thing is, I would not be surprised if Liverpool go, go six out of six. You know that it will be so. It will be so Liverpool to go six out of six and lose the league by a point. You know that it will be so Liverpool to do so. So, I I, I don't know, Gene. Gene, do you you are just like me now. You're on the fence saying we're going to uh, Listen to me, my man. I am not no fence. I am not like you, bro. If I have something to say, I will say it. You asked the, we asked the question that day we, uh, on the last show. I said, do you think we're going to win the title? I said, no. What else What else do you want me to say? Last no. Atik, Atik says, Hodge says, says yes. Head says no. Atik, they always say, go with your head, don't you? Heart. No, but I, look, I just, I, said, I, I always said we didn't, like, even we just didn't have that, like, you know, that pizzazz, that little bit of quality that, Man City have and Arsenal may have. Arsenal might have. My, Arsenal I might be. I was going to go for you when you said. In the top, let me learn, G. Let me learn. Let me learn. When you mention Arsenal, get pissed off. No, no, it's not even about that. For me, it's, it's just Man City, though. You can see Man City have been so shit the whole season. Somehow they're ahead of us, and we've been this amazing quadruple chasing team, and we're now two points behind. That's how quickly things can change in football. Well, you know, what? I want to ask you a question, Sarib. Is we we, we, we obviously we're touching on the the front five. There's yeah. a lack of composure. We've just, you, all three of us used the word panic. The, I think there's another bigger problem here is Endo, your your boy, since he's come back from the knock, hasn't been the same player. Where sure. McAllister at times is going to high and the responsibility on the ball is too much. It's too much responsibility to Endo. Teams have sort of picked up on that where they're pressing him and he's not looking comfortable. And I want him, if you if if that's the case, I really want him to come, to, come deeper, pick up those third centre back, split the centre backs, play the cent, the, uh, the third centre back role. He has been doing that, but then you probably got too much distance between him trying to make that pass into midfield. Yeah. 
do you do you think Liverpool bring him back? The reason why I say that is because if you've got McAllister playing closer to him and then going at the right time, where he's that kind of guy who can make that perfect pass. We need composure in the final third. You've just touched on Manchester City. They've got Bernardo. They've got De Bruyne. They've got that pass in the final third. We've lacked it in the last couple of games where I know we're relying on second balls. We're relying on second balls. Yeah, even the commentator said today, why do Liverpool just not go long? Like we, like you said, we're, we're, relying, on, we're relying on second balls, the, the little knockdowns. And we we're not even winning those at the moment. Awesome. And to, to move back to, to the point about Endo, you, you can kind of see his age now, 31 years old. He's been, I think when we signed him in the summer, I think the idea was, the idea for him was to be a bit part kind of player. You know, he said the, he brings the experience of James Milner. So you can kind of see the kind of like, mindset Klopp, Klopp had about having Otaro Endo in the team where he's just going to come into the team, you know, be that kind of presence in the just dressing room, that leader, that captain, Japanese captain played the World Cup. But he's coming in, done, he's done a brilliant job. We can't we can't excuse that. He's fought his way into this team. He was yeah. playing the Europa League games. Maka was the starting six and he fought his way into the team. And he did really, really well to sustain himself for as long as he has. But you can also see he's 31 years old. He might need a rest. Same with McAllister. That partnership, I still think, is Liverpool's strongest midfield. Maybe not at the moment, because since Endo's little knock as well, he's not been the same. I think after the United game, the first time, right, <clears throat> the pitch was a bit too big for him. His last good game was Man City at home. And since then, he's been on a downward spiral. And I think this this kind of time out of the team, he maybe needs to just restructure himself. But you look at it now, where does he even where does he play us in? Because we've got six games to go. We haven't got the cups, we haven't got the cups to build his fitness up. So if he doesn't get into the eleven now, he's not going to play for the rest of the season. He's not going to start many, many games because we've got six games to go, and we're, that's the only competition we're in left. So, and Atik puts it beautifully. He goes, "Endo has has overperformed. You can't really blame him." Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> for, for that for that price as well, and for that price is he's been a really really good signing, and I think he will be in the next manager's plans because he can play as a centre back. He can play. He's really good on the ball as well, and he 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 can win the ball back, and he he, he plays forward. But the, we need to bring a proper number six in that can, you know, com command the yeah. as command the, the midfield. As much as I am a part of the end of defense league, yeah. we need someone to defend him as well. I you know? I agree. I was playing devil's advocate. Um, I'm I think this is our best midfield: McAllister, Sabosli, and Curtis. Especially when you think Trent is come back now. Trent's gonna stay wide at times, be conventional at times, drive forward in wide areas, and then come into midfielders. He's he's got that freedom. And then we've got Robertson, who's generally going to go down that flank. And Curtis, he's going to come and pick up those positions as well. Sometimes he's going to be behind Robertson, controlling it and being part of the build-up. Something like Tony Cruz even did last night. The amount of times that he's picked up those positions in the left wide areas in build-up, that's what Curtis Jones is going to do. If we want a, a, a more stable, a more uh, sort of conservative build-up, a safer build-up, all these words then you have to have players like Curtis Jones. And I think it gives us a bit more balance as well. Uh, and so sort of interchanging with Diaz and Nunes as well. But Gene, I think the manager has played his best side bar one or two players tonight where we will see, I don't know when the league actually goes one week, one game a week. Do they go one game a week, probably in about a couple of weeks? Yeah, because I think we've got a game that's full and then we've got Everton next third. So this time next Thursday we'll be doing yeah. the show. Well. So, so Gene, I think then I think we're we're sort of gearing up to that, and I think the likes of Jota and these guys. I think Jota probably doesn't start every week. He'll be sort of interchanging, probably more likely with Nunes. I think that's our best team: Trent, uh, Robo, Virgin, Canate. I'm going to come on Canate anyway later on, and then the three midfield that we've just talked about: Saboslai, Curtis, and um, McAllister. And then who do you go for? I would go for personally. I think Salah and Diaz pick themselves. Sarif's not going to like it, but I think I'm 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 agree, trying to play. Cop. I'm I trying agree. to play Klopp's role here, and I think he's going to go Nunes until Jota gets up to sort of match fitness. I, I agree with you. That's the that's how, that's going to be the side that's going to. I think that that's going to be the side that's going to play on the weekend. I think that's going to be the side that that's to our go to side right now and from <laughs> until the end of the season until Jota comes back and Nasi. Get, gets a few goals, then he's the one that's going to... You can't just put him in 
and mm. expect them to start fighting. Have people had, have heard people come on here and flipping have a go at Jota, man. Come on, the guy's just come back from an injury. He's had a heart. He's played. He played two bloody cameos. I'm mean, expecting him to turn the world alight. It doesn't work like that. The guy's just come back. He's gonna need a bit of time. Yeah, look, that is the that is the side again. If we're, going, we're going with the. We just have to hope that this eleven is good enough to beat Fulham and the front three. Import more importantly, find some bloody form because that is an issue. But can we just pray that we don't flip mm. and in the first 15, 20 minutes? Because the side that you've picked us on is a very attacking side. And one yeah. of our biggest, biggest up biggest issues right now is we are down one nil in every single sort of game. So I don't want to live by the sword, you die by the sword, chief. Right now, right now, right now, you then you want flipping stru- then you call for structure and you call no, for this. No, yeah, no. this is me off. Don't yeah. you think we need to attack this because <laughs> we, we are more structure in that team. You are chasing we've got, now. We've got footballers in that team. The only thing we need to attack this, we need to. Attack. You said the midfield is right. The only thing oh, we need to attack. We're the chasing only... goal difference, Sheen, and we're chasing points. Yeah, goal, score. Listen, goal difference, forget about it. I That's an extra point, point like, Gene. Eh? A goal difference is extra point. On goal difference. We're like a nine behind. Unfair. Harib, are you really think, do you really think we're going to claw that back? If you think if you think if you think we can win the league, we can, we can claw the goal difference back as well. You know, you you don't know what I would do for six scrappy, shitty wins because that wins, wins of the league. The one nils I brought that wins <laughs> that wins of the league. I think you think six wins wins us the league. Six shitty one nil wins wins of the league. Okay, now save Man City. You go and beat the rest of the season. One game a week as well. Then what? Well, I think that doesn't take a brain surgery. Oh, no, no. Like, I, 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 I think I think they might drop. If we win our six, I think uh, City drop. Whether you think City drop or not, I don't know. If, probably, if City probably dropping, not. we are dropping as well. If City eh? drop, as we are. If City and Arsenal are going to drop points, we are going to drop points as well. <laughs> They're all going to drop points. We're all going to drop points. The running. Yeah, yeah, running. No one's going to lose though, Sim. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, from now, from now, from now, from now. No, I was waiting for that one. You know, at least my, <laughs> you know, at least my mad one take it sort of carries on unless you sort of mathematically out of the title race. But Sadi <laughs> said, <laughs> honestly, uh, honestly, honestly I, I, I'm more pissed off because Liverpool lost in it. Because if Arsenal lost and I was getting cooked for it, I would have happily taken it because Arsenal they. Yeah, but Liverpool <laughs> lost as well. Liverpool lost as well, so I can't even say anything. Yeah, yeah, believe in it. Oh. Believe in it. Believe that's the unit, Gene. Just a word on the uh, Kanate, uh, Gene. Um, look, he had a lot of he, he do when Trent's uh playing, Gene, even Bradley playing, Bradley's playing, he does have. And to be fair to Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa has been playing that role really well as well, where you found in sort of uh wide areas. But Smack is a physical number nine, and he did give him a a, a tough night, but I thought he carried on. But on the ball, I was disappointed with Kanate. There's a point where I was thinking maybe get Kwanzaa on, because if you're gonna make sure you're gonna, if you're gonna play those balls inside the channels, even whether it's to the midfielders or even the attackers, I don't know. It just looks really scruffy on the ball when it comes to Ibu. Awesome. Look, with all due respect to Ibu, and I love him as a defender, I love him as a footballer and stuff, but that's not exactly his. His forte of, of of being a proper ball playing centre back, I'm probably expecting him a bit a bit more from him. Yes, have we seen an improvement in his game in terms of of passing? We have, especially over this season. But he's been poor, man. And there's so many players that we can we can play. Look at the side and say that they've been poor. But he, I do expect more. Even in terms of aerial duels, sometimes I think like he's always. I know we expect him to be on. Um, his aerial duels are better than Saliba's duels. Just so I get that in before because I've seen Sully in the comments. But anyway, carry on, Chin. So, 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 Sully, Sully, come on, man. Uh, by the way, Sully, I cooked him yesterday. <laughs> He's here for you. He's here for you. <laughs> yeah, this is ours. is a European League. You're in the Champions League. You're arguably the best side in Europe. From you, or you were, you were arguably the best side in Europe with the best centre backs in the world and all this type of thing. Yeah, Chupo, you on. Yeah, that's Chin, Chin, I think there's a question for you here. Tom says. Uh, ask him tell us whether Trent is staying or going. You mentioned it on Sunday. You asked the question to Avi, you shook your head or you made a gesture. I look, I, everybody's got is entitled to their own opinions, and I'm just not. I know Trent's come out, um, and obviously, with that interview with the with the what's his name, with our Sarib saying that you know what, 
about staying next season. Look, I just think, I think he'll stay another season, and I think free transfer, mate. Unless we we he, we see something amazing happen, I just think that the body language from what I've seen from him and look, it's just an I don't know anything or anything like that. Like, I know ITK. I just it's a personal thing that I think you know. What I think it's your teammate. But do you think a lot of these players are riding the riding the season out, Chin? Because the body language might be that because the new manager's coming, new ideas, yeah, fresh yeah, things. Yeah, but I think you know with the I think if Real Madrid come knocking when the and they sign the players that they signed with his yeah. best mate. Bellingham over there, one of his best mates, Jude Bellingham over there, Mbappe, all the you know the, the next Galacticos, it might and you know he's given us he's given us six, seven, seven, eight years. He's been there, been there, been here for a long time. Maybe it's time for him for him to say, okay, you know what, it's time to move on. Well, look, it'll be an interesting one. It's an interesting one and a huge one for Liverpool. If we manage to get him signed up, it'll be amazing. I just think we're going to struggle, especially if we're not competing. As Gene, is is Trent signing a new contract? Yes or no? No. Good feeling. No. Salib, good feeling? Yeah, yeah, he will sign a new deal. Wow. 50-50 on the panel. What about you? Uh, wait, 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 we're not 50-50. There's three of us. There's three of us. Don't say there's three of us. You have to speak as well. Don't try to run the game. This guy, Gene, you, you don't call him out. I will call him. You don't. You just let him do it. I'm Look, I'm Look, I'd rather live up to my name. Jay is probably going to say, ask him, you don't say how it is. So let, let, me, let me sort of stay with that uh, tag today. I don't know. I don't know. See, that's a no, man. I'm boring. I'll tell you in the summer. No, I can tell you in the summer as well. Then no, I'll Thanks. tell you. I'll tell you what happens before the summer. Really, yeah. No comment. Tiger. Tiger, let you. Off. You can't tell all the secrets in one night, can we? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he goes for fuck's sake. <laughs> He's a proper bottler, man. Honestly, he's a proper bottler, man. I'm a, look, I'm only teasing. Me I'm, only teasing. I'm only teasing. I don't have any information on Trent. Honestly, I don't have. You guys know if I have any information, I share it on Twitter. Simple. You want? I'm not that type of guy where I'll con people, I'll chat shit, pretend to know. That's not me, guys. I'm sorry. That's not me. Anyway, Gene, why you look look so shocked? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Tiger, Sarib, you can do the outro. I'm absolutely shattered. <sighs> what a season. What a ride. Jürgen Klopp's farewell tour in Europe has ended on a low. But let's, 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 let's enjoy the highs. There's still a long way to go. Six to play. There might be a price to pay as well. Thank you. Ooh, Peace like out that. from B&I. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. We're winning it.